so hello everyone when i started my clinical research career long back the most common question that i was asked is that have you read the icgcp guidelines and do you know the 13 principles these principles are very important and critical as they highlight the entire functioning of the clinical trial and how the trial should be conducted so in this video we are just going to look at all the 13 principle and understand the importance of it without wasting any further time let's start the video So before we start this video I would request all of you to subscribe to this channel and like and share this video so that we can provide quality content to a lot of people So coming on to ICA GCP so fundamentally we must understand what is ICA GCP okay so ICH stands for International Council for Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals for Human Use okay and these this organization ICH provides a guideline okay this guideline is called as good clinical practice guideline which is gcp so this guideline is essentially an internationally agreed standard that ensures the ethical and scientific quality in four aspects designing conducting recording and reporting of the clinical trial that involves participation of human subjects so whenever you conduct a clinical trial the most widely accepted global guidelines for scientific and ethical quality standard is icgcp okay so whenever someone asks you what is icgcp this should be your answer next thing is which guideline do you follow so the latest draft that we have for the icgcp is e6 r3 draft which was released on 19th may just last month 2023 okay and the current applicable approved version is icgcp e6 r2 version which was released long back in 2016 so every few years whenever we conduct clinical trial there are certain experiences and through that we amend these guidelines so that we ensure that clinical trials are conducted ethically as well as scientifically okay so that participations of human subjects in trial is ensured that it is safe and ethical so let's move on to the 13 principles so the first principle is regarding the ethics in clinical trial so it states that clinical trial should be conducted in accordance to the ethical principles that have their origin in declaration of helsinki and are consistent consistent with the gcp and applicable regulatory requirement which means that clinical trial should be conducted ethically and these ethical principle arrive from declaration of helsinki so all those who don't know what is declaration of helsinki so it is a declaration which essentially gave out what how the clinical trial should be conducted ethically because there was an incidents and uh, during the nazi germany where they conducted clinical trial which was unethical they did all kinds of wrong experiments on humans and the world got together and they thought that there should be a guideline to conduct ethical trial and that is the origin of declaration of helsinki so we have to follow the declaration of helsinki along with we have to follow the good clinical practices and wherever the trial is conducted the regulatory requirement of that country should be followed so that is the first principle okay now moving on to second principle it highlights the risk versus benefit of the clinical trial so before a trial is initiated foreseeable risk and inconveniences should be weighed against the anticipated benefit which means that even before you start the trial your benefit should outweigh the risk okay and this trial should be in the interest of subject safety okay and the society at large a trial should only be initiated and continued if the anticipated benefit justify the risk so you cannot just say that you will benefit from this trial but the benefit should justify the risk also so not necessarily all trial will be given approval until and unless it justifies the risk that the participants sh should take to enter this trial so you must understand through this principle that whenever the clinical trials are conducted they are very well thought out and they are in interest of the clinical trial subject as well as the society at large this is the second principle 
the third principle speaks regarding trial participants and their safety so the right safety and well being of the trial subjects are the most important consideration and should prevail over the interest of science and society so a lot of time it happens that we have a molecule which is highly toxic but it it can cure very untreatable uh, disease okay for example cancer but before doing such kind of risky experiment it is very important to understand that we have to respect the right second is safety and third is well being of the clinical trial subject and these three aspects of the trial subject should always prevail over the interest of science and the society even when the science and the society say that uh, we have to take this risk but it should not come at the cost of right safety and well being of the subjects okay so this is the principle 3 coming to principle 4 it talks about the information of the medicinal product or the experimental medication so the available clinical and non clinical information on the investigational product should be adequate to support the proposed clinical trial so whenever a pharmaceutical company wants to conduct a clinical trial they have to provide all the clinical and non clinical data so non clinical data is when they have done data in the lab on the uh, microorganisms or uh, on the uh, lab rats and other kind of uh, animal okay and the clinical information if they have done any uh, uh, toxicity test so we have to provide all that data before we can ask them for the experimentation on humans okay so all the available data of the investigational product should have adequate support to even consider to be included in a clinical trial okay so data must be supportive so that a trial can start that is fourth principle fifth principle states about good quality of the trial so clinical trial should be scientifically sound and described in a clear and detailed protocol so whenever you conduct a clinical trial it should have a strong scientific fundamental and every aspects of your experimentation should be described in a clear and detailed protocol okay how the trial is going to be conducted what kind of methods are be used what the kind what kind of data is going to be used and what is the concentration of the medication so everything must be clearly described in the protocol so that is where we ensure in icgcb that that this is a good quality trial next thing is principle 6 so principle 6 talk, talks about the compliance with the study protocol so a trial should be conducted in compliance with the study protocol that has received prior institutional review board that is irb or institutional ethics committee that is iec approval or favorable opinion so whenever you go to apply that i want to conduct a clinical trial the pharmaceutical company has to take the regulatory approval that is from the government and they also have to take the institutional ethics committee or institutional review board approval okay this the function of the ethics committee is that they think about the benefit that this particular molecule shall have to the subjects at that particular hospital okay so when it comes to fda it is for the entire country the us cdco for the india likewise but when it comes to irc or iib it is a committee which thinks about right safety well being of the subjects in that particular hospital or the clinical research site okay and they ensure that there is compliance with the study protocol and patient safety so that is principle 6 next is principle 7 so medical decisions and responsibility so medical care given to and medical decision made on behalf of the subject should be responsibility of a qualified physician or wherever applicable qualified dentist so whenever you conduct a clinical trial it is it is to be conducted under a qualified medical professional okay so he should be a qualified physician or a dentist a member with non scientific background non medical background cannot lead the clinical trial because he won't be able to uh, judge the correct medical decision and take the responsibility so that is principle 7 next thing is the other aspects so all the members who participate in the clinical trial the trial staff competency so each individual involved in the clinical trial should be qualified by three aspects education training and experience to perform his or her responsibility so that is why whenever 
you work in a clinical trial it is very important that you are qualified because you are essentially handling the medicinal product which can have a significant impact on patient safety okay that is why all the staff should be competent and they should be qualified by education training and experience that is principle 8 coming on to principle 9 it talks about informed consent now this is one of the most critical aspect because it states that freely given informed consent should be obtained from every subject prior to clinical trial participation so whenever you explain clinical trial protocol okay so it is very important that before you begin any kind of activity you take a proper consent of the subject okay because what happened in nuremberg trials were that all the subjects were prisoners and they didn't take their permission and they did all sorts of evil experimentation likewise we have to learn from it and whenever you conduct a clinical trial you have to obtain their consent first and then only participate them in the clinical trial okay that is principle 9 principle 10 talks about the clinical trial data so you are conducting a clinical trial and you are going to get data out of it so all the clinical trial information should be recorded handled and stored in a way that allows its accurate reporting interpretation and verification so whatever data you have collected that should be properly recorded handled and stored and that is important because it should clearly have accurate reporting it should clearly interpret whatever the data and we should be able to verify whenever there is an audit that is principle 10 for clinical trial data principle 11 talks about confidentiality of the clinical trial so the confidentiality of the records that could identify the subjects should be protected respecting the privacy and confidentiality rules in accordance to the applicable regulatory requirement for example in us we have hipaa laws okay so whenever a participant participates in a clinical trial whatever his identifier are in which he could be identified anywhere his name his social security number his aadhar card number uh, his date of birth his phone number so these information should be very strictly protected and they should not be disclosed anywhere okay in us they have hipaa guidelines in other parts of the world they have other kinds of guidelines so confidentiality is one of the key aspects whenever you conduct a clinical trial next thing is good manufacturing practices so the investigational product should be manufactured handled and stored in accordance with the good manufacturing practices and they should be used in accordance with the approved protocol so whatever investigational medicine or the experimental medicine that you are testing it should follow the good manufacturing practices it should be handled properly and it should be used according to the approved protocol not more not less but according to the whatever the regulatory authority has approved that dosage and it should follow the good manufacturing practices also so that takes care of the investigational product quality that is principle 12 coming on to the last principle that is principle 13 it talks about quality assurance so all the systems with the procedure that assure the quality of every aspect of the trial should be implemented which means that we should implement all kinds of system which ensures that a particular clinical trial has certain set of quality standards and that quality can be reviewed whenever there is an audit so whatever kind of systems do you have that should be in compliance with the regulatory guidelines okay so now coming on to the last principle if you see from the first principle to the principle number 13 you must appreciate that all the aspects of the clinical trial is taken care of so whenever you know all the 13 principle you are essentially competent to conduct the clinical trial as well as appreciate that how a clinical trial should be conducted what are the guidelines and how we move forward so for every clinical research professional it is very important that we know all the guidelines and especially the 13 principles And of course, if you want to make a career in clinical research, it is very important to get appropriate certification. So our friends at Clinical Name Research uh, offer advanced certification in clinical research where they also have fundamentals of clinical data management and pharmacovigilance taught in, the, in this particular course. This particular course is very affordable and uh, they are really helping a lot of students to get into clinical research career and make a good uh, career out of it. So give them a try. 
and lastly i hope i was able to help you thank you for watching this video and please share with all of your friends so that they can also know these certain principles and make their fundamentals strong in clinical research and please make sure you subscribe to this channel and share it with a lot of people so that we can help a lot of people thank you